Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, how do we give surfactant, uh, Insure or Lisa or Inrexure. And then there is also um, different terminologies that are used, Sure or even SAD. I don't know who came up with a SAD mnemonic. It stands for supraglottic airway device. Uh, conflict of interest disclosures, being a CME, um, I'm a consultant or a speaker's bureau or receive research grant support from many organizations, uh, companies that make surfactant or devices like Burroughs Welcome, KCUSA, Abbey, Mead Johnson, Icaria, Carfusion, Mellencraft, and Neotic products. <clears throat> if I receive any honorarium, I donate to a charity that helps mothers, newborns, and children globally. I have no equities and do not receive any royalty payments from any surfactant manufacturers. So we've come a long way. In the 1980s, you know, most babies were intubated and then we decided whether it should give surfactant or not, whether prophylactic or rescue surfactant therapy. Then Professor um, uh, Hendrik Werder, uh, he's actually traveling on a train somewhere in Europe today so he said he'll try to uh, join us, uh, introduced the term INSURE, intubation, surfactant, and extubation. That was first reported in Scandinavia. Actually, the very first study was done in Kuwait, and I'll show you that when I talk about INSURE. Uh, and then recently, a paper from the uh, Netherlands about uh, intubation, recruitment of the lung, giving surfactant and extubating the baby. Then Lisa um, became very popular in the European countries, uh, Cologne, um, Angela um, uh, predominantly started using this, and then in Vienna and other places. MIST, minimally invasive surfactant treatment, uh, was coined uh, by Peter Dorgable, and then using uh, laryngeal mask airway or just dropping the surfactant into pharyngeal installation. All of them have been tried, and then finally nebulization or atomization or some other things that we are looking at, truly non-invasive surfactant administration or treatment called NIST. So we are from MIST soon, we may go to NIST in the next couple of few years. It's a very interesting and a lot of very good preclinical data on you can deliver enough surfactant to improve lung compliance, blood gases, and I'll show you at the end. So what is insured? Um, most of you know here is intubation, surfactant, extubation. Professor Hendrik Werder from Denmark introduced coined this term many years ago. It typically involves surfactant administration using an endotracheal tube or a feeding tube and providing positive pressure breaths, often with pre-medication of sedation. Patient is disconnected from CPAP during surfactant administration and given breaths for two to five minutes in the next debate. The major problem is that once you give insure with an endotracheal tube, <clears throat> many of us, even today, do not extubate these babies. We leave them intubated. And also, when you are giving this positive pressure breath, you really don't have any control on the tidal volume. As you know, four or even five breaths of large tidal volumes can cause injury to the lung. The first report on insure which um, happened in 14 patients, all of them are greater than 1500 grams uh, with RDS in Kuwait, with no mechanical ventilation and no CPAP. There were no positive pressure pills at all given, uh, no way of giving it. So they said, let's go and give surfactant, 200 milligram per kilo, they gave a bovine surfactant for hyaline membrane disease, it was then called. Uh, Victorian from Sweden, when uh, working in uh, Kuwait, and I was interested to even to see the second author of this paper is Deva Rajan. Um, so they, and with uh, Tori Kustet and uh, Bank Robertson's group, they gave this surfactant and they showed improvement in survival and, and gas exchange. Um, this is uh, just surfactant and nothing else, no CPAP, no ventilation. So a couple of years later, Professor Hendrik Werder um, introduced the concept of insure, post surfactant, keeping the babies on CPAP. Um, so why insure? Why, why do you want to think about giving surfactant to babies? If the baby has RDS and CPAP fails, this is what happens. Serious morbidity happens. 
this uh, an observational study by Peter Dargaville. He showed that this is the gray bars are um, CPAP failures, pneumothorax, death, BPD, death or BPD as a composite outcome, or any one of these major morbidities are extremely high if the babies fail CPAP without surfactant. And, and this is in 25 to 28 week gestation. Similarly, even in bigger babies, 29 to 32 week gestation, if you don't give surfactant to a baby, pneumothorax incidence is significantly higher and uh, other differences were not statistically significant. So both in small babies and big babies, moderately big preterm babies, um, surfactant treatment improves the outcome. What are the reasons for insured failure? Uh, if the baby is less than 750 grams in one study, and in another study, even babies extremely low birth weight, just like less than one kilo, also the failure rates with insured is higher. Uh, you can predict uh, insured failures by looking at some of these criteria in different studies. PF ratio, less than 218, and AA ratio, arterial to alveolar PO2, less than 0 0.44 or PCO2 greater than 50 millimeters of mercury, and in one study, arterial to alveolar PO2 less than 0.18. These are extremely sick babies. Normal AA ratio in a preterm baby is about 0.7 or 0.8. You can see how hypoxemic these babies are. Uh, or some have used radiological criteria, grading criteria. So infants who fail insure are obviously often intubated and then continue to be mechanically ventilated. So what happens with multiple insure procedures? Infants who require multiple insure procedures have significantly lower gestational age, lower birth weight, and had more severe RDS at the beginning, and also had a higher incidence of PDA, longer duration of oxygen therapy compared to babies who responded to single insure group. It's, it's clear, right? Younger gestational age, more severe RDS, even the insure failure rate is higher. And uh, you can see need for mechanical ventilation is significantly increased from 15 to 23 percent. And there was no uh, change in PPD in babies who are treated with a single dose or multiple doses of surfactant using insure technique. So how can we minimize um, insure failures? Um, most of the studies were done using insure, and then after that, babies were maintained on nasal CPAP. And nasal CPAP with or without insure failure rates in different randomized control trials range from 24 to 67%. So what about insure and maintain the babies on nasal intermittent positive pressure ventilation or NIPPV? Uh, here is our study we published in 2012. So babies were given early insure with 200 milligram per kilo of poractant alpha and then looked at the outcomes and the extubation failures. So babies are randomized to either nasal CPAP, post-insure, or NIPPV in babies less than 30 weeks gestation. You can see that mechanical ventilation via the endotracheal tube at seven days of age was 17% versus 42%. Uh, total extubation failures needing intubation was 23% throughout the NICU stay compared to 58%. We also showed physiological BPD was lower Oxygen at 36 weeks also significantly lower if the babies were given <coughs> surfactant and then maintained on NIPPV, you reduce the need for intubation and reintubations, and therefore you protect the lung and reduce the risk for BPD. Again, BPD is a secondary outcome, not a primary outcome. And there was no difference in the need for additional doses, even though 21%, 4 uh, percent of the babies, more babies got surfactant but that was not statistically significant. So what is LISA? It is known by different names, LISA, LIST, MIST. Uh, I'll show you 12 different ways it has been known. Um, the technique involves surfactant administration in this small tube, other than an endotracheal tube, while the baby is breathing spontaneously on nasal CPAP or on NIPPV support, typically without any pre-medication or sedation. Again, when I say typically, there are no standardized way of giving either INSU or LISA. Depends on where, in which country you are practicing. 
Um, some have called this missed minimally invasive surfactant treatment, less invasive surfactant administration, avoidance of mechanical ventilation, surfactant without intubation. It's a German group, but I think it's a misnomer. When you put something through the vocal cords, to me, that's intubation. This is the meant surfactant without an endotracheal intubation using an endotracheal tube. Take care approach, Turkish people call that. Non-intubated surfactant application, again, a study from Germany. Sonsure, Sondai nasogastrica surfactant extubation from Spain. SAINT, I even forgot what the SAINT stands for. Ecalmist, early CPAP and large volume mist. MISER, minimally invasive surfactant administration. LIST, or less invasive surfactant treatment. And sure, uh, just recently from India, um, the group uh, published a paper, they called it as sure, um, surfactant without endotracheal tube intubation. So all of them pretty much mean the same. You are not using an endotracheal tube. You have the baby who's breathing spontaneously and typically giving it with a smaller tube, a feeding tube, umbilical arterial catheter or different tubes. I will show you in a minute. Uh, typically without pre-medication or sedation. But that practice may be changing uh, as we get more experience using LISA technique. So what are the major differences, similarities and difference between the two? So in need for direct laryngoscopy, both in show and LISA techniques do need uh, both of them, right? So trying to get this out of my way. Um, Need for positive pressure ventilation in ensure because you're using an endotracheal tube and you give surfactant, it has to be given either with bag or on a ventilator, positive pressure breaths. Whereas here, surfactant dis, uh, distribution relies on spontaneous breathing. And that is why you don't want to decrease the baby's spontaneous respiratory effort with heavy sedation. Uh, endotracheal tube. Here, thin catheters, feeding tube, angiocatheter, arterial catheter, or LISA catheter. Secure airway, yes, since you intubate the baby, you have a very good idea where your tube is. <coughs> Whereas with the LISA technique, you have to be very careful, make sure the tube, the catheter or the tube feeding tube are using stays in the trachea. Vocal cord position remains abducted. Vocal cords can adduct in LISA. Sedative medications are often used because we're intubating the baby. Here, less often used, so called awake intubation. So that's where some people have problems with it. Can we <coughs> intubate the baby electively for surfactant administration without sedation or pre medication? Well, I'll discuss about that. Tolerability babies over 30 weeks tolerate very well. Extremely low gestation like neonates, like micropremies tolerate uh, LISA procedure much better. Surfactant kinetics, a uh, study was done by Kaisa Bolin uh, from Stockholm, published many years ago. She looked at uh, lung association in an animal model um, during insure and compared with LISA. This lung association of surfactant is less and she measured dynamic compliance was also low. Whereas with LISA technique, she showed better distribution of surfactant in the lung as well as improved dynamic compliance. Here is the step. Uh, looking at, this is spontaneous breathing, this is mechanical ventilation, this is looking at the radioactivity of labeled surfactant in uh, preterm rabbits. And she showed that uh, uh, distribution of surfactant is much better compared to insured technique. This is time zero control elements. And she also looked at compliance. You can see in a spontaneous breathing with the LISA technique, compliance was much improved compared to insure technique. So in all these patient groups, animals, kilos of 200 milligram was given with pharyngeal installation and then allowed to spontaneous breathing that equivalent of LISA and then mechanically ventilated equivalent of insure. So they concluded that positive pressure ventilation post surfactant treatment impairs tissue association of exogenous surfactant and lower dynamic compliance and also she demonstrated inactivation of the surfactant. Once you start injuring the lung, your surfactant gets inactivated, whether it's exogenous or endogenous surfactant that the babies make. So there are a number of tubes that are used, a nasogastric tube with a side and end hole, 
or just end hole uh, suction catheter, uh, umbilical arterial catheters, 16 gauge angio catheter, and LISA cap, which I'm going to discuss at the end. Um, we are planning a study, a multi central study in the United States. So 1.7 millimeter outer diameter, and then the classical endotracheal tube. Uh, I took this from uh, Max Vento from Spain's uh, review article or consensus statement published last year. So we reviewed uh, years ago, many about in 2017, we published a review article looking at techniques um, uh, people are using, so-called the Cologne method. They use four or five French feeding tube and the dose of surfactant pre-medication, all of them are different in different studies. You can see in Cologne, they used atropine sedation analgesia as an option um, given over one to three minutes. Uh, again, another German study, four French feeding tube, given over one to five minutes, atropine was optional. Hobart method from Australasia by Peter Dorgovil, 16 gauge angiocat, 100 to 200 milligram per kilo, much faster, given over 15 to 30 seconds. And sucrose was, uh, was their uh, pre-medication of analgesia. Uh, again, NINSAP trial, catheter using Megill forceps, and so patent is given one to three minutes. Again, atropine sedation analgesics are optional. LISA method in Austria, 1.3 millimeter diameter feeding tube using a Megill forceps, 200 milligram per kilo, given over two to five minutes, no pre-medication, no sedation, no atropine. Turkish group published their paper with five French feeding tube, 30 to 60 seconds, no sedation. In Spain, they used four French feeding tube, again, timing one to three minutes, atropine. Karolinska method, five French cut to 30 centimeters and atropine and fentanyl were used. e Calvin study, 17 gauge vascular catheter, 130 millimeters long, and the dose of surfactant is five ml per kilo, um, 0.5 ml bolus over 20 to 30 seconds, and then keep repeating it. Same trial, 300 millimeter long catheter, not specified in narcotic analgesia. NISAP trial, feeding tube, 4 ml, not specific. As you can see, the type of TB used or catheter use is different. The dose of surfactant use is different. And I want you to remember that it is, there are important things um, when we talk about dose. And the timing, how fast you give it is also different. Pre-medication, yes, no. So again, it's not uh, yet standardized. Let's look at the data. So there are six randomized controls that have been published. Um, uh, uh, all of them are using uh, Kiroso, uh, 895 patients in the systematic review and meta-analysis by Rigo et al. from Belgium. So they look, this is LISA or LIST, this is INSHO, and all of them are mostly on CPAP. Uh, so they looked at BPD among all patients, BPD in survivors, death or BPD as a composite outcome or early CPAP failure, or any mechanical ventilation reported. All of them are in favor of LISA or LIST. The morbidities, no difference. No difference in PDA, no difference in PDA ligation, ROP, PBL, severe intraventricular hemorrhage or any IVH, necrotizing enterocolitis, death or morbidity. None of them are different between these two, except death or BPD as a composite outcome was less in favor of LISA or LIST technique. Coughing, and reflux, surfactant reflux was a major issue in LISA. So you have to be very careful, especially if you're using a larger volume surfactant, you need to slow down to minimize reflux and reflux induced bradycardia and desaturations. The second, using the same studies, six studies, the second meta-analysis was published by Adana, uh, Aldana Aguirre from Alberta, Canada uh, in 2017. Again, from Germany, Gopal et al., Canmos from Turkey, Mimia from Iran, Mohammed in Iran, Bao from China, and Angela Cripps from Germany. Um, so you can see the technique. Uh, they all called it as LISA, except um, China. They call it as MIST. And control group was CPAP. Control group was insured in the rest of the trials. Gestational age range from 26 to 34 weeks. Uh, LISA versus control. Uh, these are about 100 babies in each arm, 60 to 70 babies, a small study here, 
47, 43, about 100. So totally 685. Age of randomization, typically less than two hours in most of the studies, except the early study by Gopal et al, less than 12 hours of age. Criteria for CPAP and FiO2, most of them use 0 0.3 as the criteria. Again, I wanted to remember the, what FiO2 should we even think about giving surfactant is also changing. In 2013, they used the, in Turkey, they used a 0 0.4 as a criteria to give surfactant. Again, uh, dosing 100, 100, and then 200 or 200 in these two studies, 100, it's anywhere from 100 to 200, depending on the weight of the baby, the 2015 study. Um, the 12 week, it's a multi center study, single center, multi center, multi center, and the multi center trial. Pre medication, again, as you can see, yes, no, no, atropine only, uh, not mentioned, atropine only, yes, no. So, in they show LISA compared to INSURE, decrease the need for positive pressure ventilation, reduction in death or BPD or BPD alone, very similar to REGO's systematic review and analysis findings. You can see the odds ratio, effective, um, relative risk. Uh, death or BPD at 36 weeks, 0 0.75. BPD at 36 weeks among survivors, also 0 0.72 relative risk. All of them are statistically significant. Number of babies on mechanical ventilation by 72 hours of age was also significantly lower, as well as mechanical ventilation anytime in favor of LISA compared to INSURE. And no other complications. The only thing, as I mentioned, surfactant reflux was much more common with LISA 2.52. Pulmonary hemorrhage, no difference. So what happens in with LISA? Does the surfactant get distributed? So here is a very nice study, but a small study published um, in 2016 uh, from Amsterdam. They looked at end expiratory lung volume and SF ratio, saturation to FiO2 ratio in 26 to 36 gestation babies on nasal CPAP and the FiO2 was greater than 0.30. It's a prospective observation study. So they used uh, using an umbilical catheter, Kirosur 160, 240 milligram per kilo, given over one to three minutes. Interestingly, they had it under direct visualization of the ocal cards. So babies, when they were getting surfactant, was not getting positive pressure. Because if you keep the mouth open with the laryngoscope, you lose a lot of the CPAP pressure. So in spite of that, uh, using electrical impedance tomography, they looked at end expiratory lung volume. This is baseline. This is um, end expiratory lung volume at one minute, five minute, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes. So after within five minutes, you can see a significant increase in end expiratory lung volume. So even with loss of pressure, by keeping the mouth open, you are able to improve the lung volume. That means you are able to deliver a uh, surfactant into the lung. And also you can see improvement in SF ratio significantly. And this is before, this is end of surfactant treatment. And then here is the within time. One minute, five minutes, 30 or 60 minutes. You can see a statistically significant improvement in oxygenation as well as improvement in FRC, lung volume. So um, here is uh, another study, very similar to what we did in 2012. Here, they gave Lisa um, and then followed by, uh, uh, then randomized the babies to CPAP or NIPPV in preterm infants, 26 to 30 gestation. It's a large study, 200 babies in this randomized control trial. And they give 200 milligrams per kilo of foractant alpha and mechanical ventilation by 72 hours was 13%. Almost similar to what we published. And then overall need for mechanical ventilation was also less. Interestingly, they showed surfactant reflux was also less. And remember that during NIPPV, even in adult patients with, uh, who are getting bronchoscopy, you can actually decrease bradycardia and desaturations and deliver more pressure in adult patients uh, with NIPPV compared to nasal CPAP. So clearly, during NIPPV, you do deliver more pressure, even though there is a catheter or an at least a cat, uh, angio catheter in the trachea, the diameter is so small. Some are concerned that you may not be able to deliver the pressure, especially in small preemies where the ET tube, um, uh, the tracheal diameter may be 
2.5 to 3 millimeters, right? So, however, you can see surfactant treatment uh, was required only in 38% compared to 60% if they were on CPAP. Moderate to severe RDS was also lower. Number of babies requiring more than uh, one, two, two or more doses was also lower, but not statistically significant. So very similar to what we showed few years ago. Uh, this study was just published uh, from Turkey, Ankal, so by Ankal et al. So what about LISA in moderate and late preterm babies? I know in developing low and middle income countries, they're not going after 23 weeker or a 25 weeker or 24 weeker in some centers, um, low and middle income countries. So here is a study looking at late preterm babies or moderate preterm, 32 to 36 gestation, a multi-center randomized control trial from Quebec, Canada. So they looked at, they used MIST. So they used LISA using Viratin or Cervanta, four ml per kilo by a five French feeding tube, again, under direct vision in moderately preterm infants was associated with significant reduction in mechanical ventilation. So need for mechanical ventilation or pneumothorax needing a chest tube was 33% compared to 90%. That's pretty high. 90% incidence of pneumothorax or need for mechanical ventilation in babies between 30 to 36 weeks Yes, I was very surprised at this number. Pneumothorax alone was not different. Number of babies requiring two or more doses was high, 37.5 compared to 24%, but not statistically significant, a small number. And then they gave pre-medication was atropine plus fentanyl. So fat and reflux with the LISA technique or the MIS technique was 66%. They observed reflux of the medication. Very likely, two things. One, a large volume of surfactant. Two, they kept the mouth open under direct vision why they were pushing the surfactant in. And that's why I told you, it's very important that we should continue to deliver positive pressure during LISA or MIS technique. Otherwise, you will end up losing a lot of surfactant. And you may not be able to deliver much surfactant into the lung. So here is an experience, observation study of um, five year single center experience in preterm infant between 25 to 29 weeks uh, using LISA. They use a feeding tube uh, in shoe via endotracheal tube, no pre medication, again from Ankara, Turkey. And uh, birth weight, uh, similar, about one kilo, mean gestational age 28 weeks. And they showed that mechanical ventilation uh, within 72 hours of life significantly lower, 27% versus 42%. This is after they started using LISA routinely in their NICU. Age at the first dose of surfactant was not different, around two hours. So early rescue surfactant therapy. BPD, total incidence was lower, 43% versus 54 And then moderate to severe BPD was also less. Again, it's a secondary outcome, also an observation study. So LISA treatment, is associated with less need for mechanical ventilation, is associated with less, need, less moderate to severe BPD. But we already saw six studies that in randomized control trial that showed BPD was significantly less death or BPD. So what do we do? Uh, this is our guidelines in our NICU when we use LISA. We give atropine 20 micrograms per kilo per dose IV four minutes before we start the procedure. And then fentanyl, one or two mics per kilo per dose, three minutes, even over three minutes. And we do keep naloxone at the bedside to reverse the effects of fentanyl, like chest wall rigidity or vocal cord spasm. May need to use vecronium if naloxone is not effective to reverse the effect of fentanyl. Again, we don't routinely reverse it with Narcan, only if we see poor respiratory effect. Again, we use NIPPV and therefore we support the baby, even if the baby has hypopnea, uh, uh, intubation at time zero. Second option is just use atropine and oral sucrose, 24%, single dose 0.2 ml for babies less than 32 weeks or 0.4 ml for babies over 32 weeks to term. And oral sucrose effect lasts for five to eight minutes. So you don't have to really rush and complete the procedure or attempt to intubate. Does Lisa have any issues? Complications. I told you the benefits of LISA compared to Insure. 
I told you about the reflux, but here is a very large German neonatal network data. Uh, they looked at very low birth weight infants. Uh, 2,624 babies were treated with LISA. 3,095 babies were given surfactant by endotracheal tube in the years between 2009 to 2016. You can see um, the LISA babies were slightly bigger, 884 compared to 814. Gestation late, 26.8 compared to 26.2. Mortality was low. BPD was lower. IVH, especially grade two to four, was significantly lower, nearly half. Out of your recurring surgery was also half. So when they looked at the outcomes with using multivariate regression analysis, they showed that mortality odds ratio was 0.66, BPD, IVH, ROP needing surgery. However, they found focal intestinal perforation was higher, 49%, 1.49 odds ratio, uh, range 14 to uh, 95, 1.14 to 1.95. And then this was much more, focal intestinal perforation was much more common in babies less than 26 weeks. 10% with LISA, 7.4% with endotracheal tube uh, technique. So I really, they could not explain what would have caused LISA uh, in perforation with the LISA technique more often than with endotracheal tube, especially in micropremies. So uh, focal intestinal perforation needing surgery as a percentage was much higher in 22 week babies in 23 weeks. And then after 25 and 26 weeks, there's no difference in need for surgery. And then they looked at inotropes and chorioamnionitis, postnatal steroids, PDA drug treatment was more commonly seen in babies who got perforation, uh, multiple gestation, female gender was protective, Antenatal steroids didn't have much effect on them. this spontaneous uh, focal intestinal perforation, again, SGA. So they concluded that was seen predominantly in babies under 26 gestation. Not other, none of the other studies to date have reported this complication. <clears throat> so I told you, <clears throat> insure fails. These also will fail. So what are the risk factors? Um, for LISA are missed to fail. They looked at about 185 babies and they found lower surfactant dosing and no antenatal steroids. These are modifiable factors. We can modify them as clinicians. Encourage the obstetricians to give more antenatal corticosteroids. And then we as pediatric and neonatologists use a larger dose, uh, then you will reduce missed failure. And what happens with missed failures? Missed failures result in severe IVH, decreased survival, and prolonged need for mechanical ventilation. So here is the missed failure group is in the red bar, missed success babies are in the green bar. You can see if the surfactant dose was less than 200 milligram per kilo, missed failure was 85% compared to 63%. No antenatal corticosteroid, 7.8% of the babies failed missed compared to nearly 20% of the babies. So by talking to our obstetrics colleagues, encouraging them to give antenatal corticosteroids, we can improve the outcome and we can improve the response of the surfactant in these babies. If infection like CRP was higher, probably congenital pneumonia, so they had more failures with the mist. Oxygen before the mist, higher FiO2, so, so more mist. So if you wait until the FiO2 is more than 0 0.4 or, or 0 0.5, you're going to have more failures with mist or LISA. IBH grade three or grade two or greater than grade two was also higher if the babies failed missed based on mechanical ventilation. So survival without any of the serious adverse events was 57% if the babies failed missed or LISA compared to 76% if the babies you are able to successfully treat the baby with missed or LISA. Again, um, two was 14%, uh, 200 milligram per kilo dose compared to 35% if you use less than 200 milligram per kilo per dose, first dose. So there was another study from Netherlands looking at quality assessment and response to LISA without sedation. Should we use sedation? So it's a single center experience, again, experience in preterm infants, less than 32 weeks. In 48% of the time, 
Lisa, the first attempt failed. 34% quality of technical conditions, you know, how they're holding, what the position of the baby's head, how they are trying to intubate were not uh, proper. When the neonatologist performed Lisa, the success on the first attempt was 76%. So they concluded that if you use atropine during Lisa, resulted in a very low incidence of bradycardia. We know that because babies are extremely vagotonic. Anytime you touch the oropharynx with even a suction catheter, they become bradycardic, right? We all seen that in the delivery room. So uh, giving atropine helps. Uh, they recommend that should therefore be strongly considered whether you use sedatives or not. Success with LISA may be improved with sedative pre-medication, especially in bigger babies who fight or attempt to intubate, uh, awake intubation, I would recommend sedation. In micro preemies, at least give atropine and sucrose uh, if you're concerned about giving. So here is the megal forceps and feeding tube that the Cologne group uses all the time. Uh, for us in the US, um, uh, and even for me, um, it's much easier to use an angiocatheter, LISA catheter than a feeding tube and using a megal forceps. If you are used to nasotracheal intubation, like they do in Canada, for them, this is piece of cake. But they always intubate nasotracheally and they use the megal forceps to push the an ET tube into the trachea. For them, it's very easy. But in the United States, over 90% of them, neonatologists, we use orotracheal intubation. So if you are comfortable with nasotracheal, you could use the megal forceps and for your uh, LISA technique. I hope this video plays. This is a video given by uh, Catherine Klepfermas from Vienna, a good friend of mine. And um, I hope uh, this video shows up well. You can see this baby already has an IV there. You can see some blood there, you know why? They routinely give caffeine before they give Lisa. So secretion, suction, <clears throat> McGill forceps, a feeding tube, if anybody knows Viennese language, you can tell me what she said. <clears throat> so they close the mouth, baby's on CPAP, and then they're pushing the surfactant. You can see, you know, multiple videos on the YouTube or many of the publications about Lisa or Miss Technique. So they're actually aspirating the stomach also to make sure that no surfactant getting into the stomach. Okay, so that's one te one one technique, and then here in uh, in my own unit. Uh, this is one of my fellows um, giving Lisa for the first time. It's a bigger baby, 30 weeks. So we gave atropine and fentanyl. And we used the uh, So I call this up, I guess it's Grand Canyon, dark hole. Don't put anything into the Grand Canyon. So you do need experience. I just want to show you the slide so that we can, when your first time you're doing it, uh, you will be struggling. Uh, So if you want to verify, you can use a PD cap to close this in. Yeah, there it is.
So if you want, if you want to verify, oops, oops. if you want to verify the position of the Lisa catheter or angio catheter, you can actually put the PD cap, even you know, halfway through, you're concerned about it. Maybe they came out, just put a PD cap and check it. It's very simple. You don't even have to open the baby's mouth, put in the laryngos again, and see if it's going through the vocal cords, which is much more dramatic and invasive than using a PD cap. I was very surprised that the gas the baby is exhaling can come through all the way up and picked up by the PD cap. So Optimus trial, collaborative pair trial investigating MIST, uh, Peter Dargival, um, for many years, he was uh, trying to do the study uh, 25 to 28 week gestation on CFAP or MIPPV, less than six hours of age, FIO to 0. Point, greater than 0 0.30. MIST technique was used using the angio catheter as a 2.5 endotracheal tube for comparison. Criteria for intubation if the FIO2 was consistently greater than 0 0.45. Original samples were 606, but it was very difficult to enroll babies. Also COVID, uh, delayed it even more. So the study was stopped um, after the DSMB reviewed the data and 486 out of the 600, almost 500 babies have been enrolled as of March and we will know the results pretty soon. So what are they doing in Germany? We started um, in Denmark and Scandinavian countries. First they started in show, right? Now, looking at the LISA, it's a publication from Professor Herding in last year, looking at uh, LISA use between 2009 to 2017, a significant increase in the use of LISA, which means more babies are also getting surfactant from 2009 to 2017. Endotracheal tube surfactant treatment has come down considerably, and then surfactant, no surfactant use obviously is much lower. Then they looked at a lot of babies, and this is 13,228 babies. A mechanical ventilation in 72 hours. You can see a gestation in 22 weeks, 23 weeks. Still, after Lisa, over 50% of the babies stayed on mechanical ventilation by 72 hours of age, and um, less than 50% once you are at 25, and then at 26, less than 40%. So in bigger babies, you know, 30 weeks, only 10 or 12% of the babies or 15% of the babies are intubated post LISA in their neonatal network, German neonatal network. They looked at the <coughs> LISA was ensured in BPD. Again, <clears throat> this is no surfactant. This is um, LISA. This is tube surfactant, it ensured. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you can see the BPD rates are lower but uh, not statistically. Uh, sorry goes. to interrupt, sir. The slides are yeah. not moving, sir. Okay. Even now it's not moving? No, sir. It is staying in that optimist. Yes, oh. sir. Now it's moving. It is moving, sir. Okay. Sorry. Okay. You can see the slide now? Yes, sir. Thank you. So I guess I was an optimist. Um, okay. So... This is a German neonatal network data that was published last year by Professor Herting, uh, 13,000. You can see the LISA use is uh, gone up from 2009 to 2017, and ET tubes of fact, the in technique has come down. The number of babies not getting any surfactant is obviously lower. Uh, need for mechanical ventilation by 70 dollars of life in 4,000 babies that were treated with LISA. You know, if you're a more mature baby, 29 or 30 weeks, about 20% or 15% of it is intubated within 70 hours of life. Again, most of these units use uh, CPAP post LISA. Uh, BPD rates um, tend to be lower. The middle light gray bar is LISA. The dark gray bar is uh, tube surfactant or insure. You can see in all gestational age, it's a trend towards less BPD. Again, this is a database, uh, retrospective look at it. IVH grade three or four is also tend to be lower with LISA compared to the endotracheal tube or insure technique in all gestation age. So they, uh, this is another report from Spain, uh, just published a few months ago in June, 
2020, where they looked at Lisa, and they, uh, this is Lisa, and this is uh, before Lisa, which is in show. So they looked at need for mechanical ventilation, IBH, and mortality, and they showed that less IBH um, with um, Lisa, which is the red bar, purple compared to blue, pre-Lisa. Number needed to treat is five babies. You can reduce one IBH, which is pretty good number. It again is historical control, uh, not a randomized control trial. So need for mechanical ventilation was also lower um, on day one, day three, as well as day seven, number of babies intubated in the LISA uh, or CPAP group, uh, sorry, with LISA was much lower. So the question comes up, I think I've convinced you that LISA is safe and feasible, works well, both in smaller babies and in bigger babies. The question is, what should be the indication for giving surfactant, whether you're using LISA or insure technique? Three large observation studies have been published um, in the last uh, few years. This is again Peter Dargaville from Australia, Tasmania and Australia. They looked at, this is area under the curve, a value of 0.5 means no predictive power, a value of one means excellent, perfect, right? Nothing is perfect. So they looked at in, in babies between 25 to 28 gestation, on 29 to 30 degree gestation, the highest FiO2 value in the first two hours or highest FiO2 value in the first six hours in bigger babies. And guess what? The cutoff was, if the FiO2 is more than 0 0.3 in the first hours of life, it's a key predictor of CPAP failure and associated with adverse outcomes in both preterm babies below 28 weeks as well as below 32 weeks with an area of interest of at least 0 0.8 in both groups, very close to one. A second study um, published from Poland, uh, looking at what FiO2 should be used of factor, 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. Uh, they showed FiO2 of 0 0.29 in the second hour of life was identified as the key risk factor with an area under the curve 0 0.7 or CPAP failure and was associated with higher mortality and morbidity, the sensitivity of 73, specific to 57. So very similar to what Peter Dargo published. A third study by Kaki Eliotal from Texas uh, last year, um, looking at preterm babies less than 30 weeks. Again, retrospective study showed that FiO to 0 0.3 or greater in the second hour of life and radiograph severity RDS predicted CPAP failure. So I think now the tendency used to use 0 0.3 as a cutout for the first dose of surfactant. The European consensus guidelines have also changed their recommendations to suggested protocol FiO2 more than 0.3 or 30% oxygen on CPAP of plus six. Used to be plus five, now they recommend plus six centimeters for early rescue surfactant treatment. What about supraglactic? And supra, there's a typo there. Supraglottic airway device delivery, SAD, of laryngeal mask airway of surfactant administration. Eight studies have been published between 2004 to 2018. Um, one, two, three, four of them are randomized controlled trials. The other were just case reports. So the most recent one by Carrie Roberts uh, was published. Uh, I'm going to show you the data. Uh, here is uh, the study published in 2018. So supraglottic airway device or LMA versus CPAP. So surfactant was given via laryngeal mask airway and then the control group of CPAP without any surfactant and 28 to 30 kg gestation. Birth weight, minimum weight has to be 1250 because we didn't have a small enough laryngeal mask airway to put in babies less than one kilo or 800 grams. The FiO2 was 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. Uh, interestingly, the control group that were on CPAP, 64% of them subsequently received surfactant anyway. So overall, treatment failures. So here is the Sorry,
increased need for infant overall, 30% versus 4 Remember, these babies did not get any surfactant when this outcome was measured. Okay, uh, did I lose you? Yes, sir. Sorry to interrupt, okay. sir. Uh, your slides okay. have gone now. Um, so we need to reshare okay. the slides. Yeah, so where did I got disconnected? Do you know what slide? Sir, uh, you were, uh, sir, once the slide plays, I could be able to tell you. Sir. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Yes, sir. This one, sad, sad versus CPAP. Oh, great. Okay. The, the voice went off initially after the slides also. Yes, sir. With this slide. Okay. Thank you. Um, so mean birth weight is about 2 kilo, 32 weeks. They gave atropine plus sucrose, 1 ml to the tip of the tongue. And they showed that LMA, surfactant given through LMA decreased the need for intubation. Odds ratio 0 0.30. Number needed to treat 4. However, in 18% of the babies, they had more than 50% of the surfactant dose aspirated from the stomach. So even with LMA, it's not a tight seal above the glottis. So you will lose the surfactant. Uh, and they also found better response was seen in babies, subgroup of babies between 0 0.30 to 0 0.35 rather than 0 0.35 to 0 0.4. So what catheter should we use preferably? Angiocatheter? or LISA catheter, so-called the LISA cat. So this is a mannequin study, Laura Fabri et al. from Pharma, Italy published this paper. Uh, they did a five country mannequin study by neonatologists um, from Austria, Belgium, Poland, Spain, and UK. Overall, neonatologists preferred using LISA cat than the angio cat on the neonatal mannequin. And the reasons they gave why they preferred included the color, the distal markings and markings at the lip level and soft rounded tip and stiffness, kinkability and uh, lure. Both of them have lure, so they didn't um, have any difference in them. And potential safety, neonatologists prefer the LISA cat than the angio cat. So are there any problems with the LISA and how can we correct them? Bradycardia desaturations happen, right? Whenever you try to intubate a baby. So give atropine and fentanyl. In some centers, propofol is used in neuro. Again, it is, there's a potential neurotoxicity with propofol. So I do not recommend propofol for the time being. There's no long-term studies on propofol in a preterm baby and neurodevelopmental outcome. Apnea is another common issue. So caffeine before LISA. Some have used ketamine, but ketamine increases the risk for apnea risk. And therefore, uh, caffeine is better. Lisa failure on first attempt, sedation will improve the, um, your first attempt on uh, putting a, a Lisa catheter. Manage, I put something when that happened anyway, thanks. I just paused a few questions. I'll ask those questions and then hand over. Hello. Okay. Um, I think the panelists or somebody's talking. Okay, insertion depth. 1.5 centimeters for babies less than 27 weeks. Uh, two centimeters for all others. This is the Melbourne group recommendation. If you're worried about the dislodgement of the catheter, I will I check, check with, or, or check what, with. Not create confusion now. You send me the questions then, what I should ask. Or uh, the, the, whatever I. Hello. Okay. Coughing. Uh, so check with the EC cap or CO2 deductor or PD cap. Coughing or gagging, you have to slow down the administration. You could give it over two or three minutes. Reflex, use a small caliber catheter like Lisa cat or an angio catheter. You can also use a small volume surfactant and reverse to the number position. Um, 12 to 15 degrees will also help to minimize the risk of reflex. Repeat Lisa procedure, um, use of, if you can avoid this, use a higher dose like poracant alpha, 200 milligram per kilo. And how do we improve the Lisa success? As I said, two studies have been published. 
use of NIDPV pre and post LASA procedure will help you to keep the baby from getting intubated. I think LASA here to stay is no longer just a fashion. So here is a study from by Soumya G and I et al, uh, published in Pediatric Pulmonology from India. Does it work in low and middle income countries? The largest randomized control trial, they had 350 babies. I want to congratulate them. Uh, but only 50 babies are less than 28 weeks. Um, birth weight, 1630, median 31 weeks. Time to first dose is a factor about an hour. Need for mechanical ventilation within 72 hours was significantly lower. What they call the sure technique, that's basically LISA, 19% uh, versus 40%. Duration of CPAP was also less. BPD rate was also lower. Ne necrotizing enterocolitis stage three or greater was none as compared to 7%. Length of stay was shorter with um, LISA or SURE method that they called it as. And transient bradycardia and desaturation was 11%. I was really surprised that they did not document any desaturations um, because you remember this insure group in their NICU had, uh, did not use uh, any sedation in all the three centers. So that sure was stands for surfactant without with an endotrach intubation without an endotracheal intubation or with an intubation using 16 gauge angiocatheter or six French feeding tube, no sedation in both arms. So they really use the same guidelines in both groups. Like one group didn't get sedation versus other group. No medication in both groups and insure was given with a T-piece. So they were able to control the pressure and not with bagging. And two neonatologists with experienced neonatologists did the procedure all the time in these centers. And three NICUs, Lucknow, New Delhi and Hyderabad. Again, I want to congratulate them for doing this study in a resource limited country like India. So insure versus LISA, the arguments are we have no standardization either, neither for LISA nor for insure. There are differences in sedation policy, variable thresholds for pressure and FiO2 to give surfactant. And as I mentioned, insure technique is supposed to be involved rapid admin surfactant and then extubation. So the first study by Gupta et al from Calcutta, India, uh, showed they didn't use any sedation. They maintained same uh, surfactant dose and thresholds, and they gave early rescue surfactant, and they gave positive pressure only for about 182 seconds. And they used NIPPV mode in both arms, which has been shown to improve pressure transmission when airways partially occluded. I told you adult studies have shown that. Here is the study from Calcutta, Gupta et al. Again, uh, 28 to 34 week gestation. This is the very first study to compare same poly procedures for insure and LISA and on NIPPV in babies, preterm babies. 58 babies, 200 milligram per kilo. 29 babies got LISA method, insure was 29. Similar birth weight, time to first dose an hour, need for mechanical ventilation by half, 10% versus 21% not statistically significant with a small number. BPD was also lower, no IVH, and length of stay was much shorter. So they used five French feeding tube with a megal forceps for LISA, no sedation in both arms, and then again, they decreased the duration of positive pressure breaths. So that's about LISA and insure. And now where do we go? So truly non-invasive use of patent treatment using nebulization or atomization is another area of interest. It's a study published uh, using Herosurf called CureNeb study in preterm babies. Um, this was published in Archives of Diseases of Children in 2018. This is number of patients intubated, 29 to 31 weeks. And the nebulized group uh, is not significant, but in bigger babies, 32 to 34 weeks, 34 weeks, the number of babies needing intubation was only one out of 11 compared to 10 out of 13. So in more mature babies, nebulized surfactant is able to decrease the need for intubation. Here is a study looking at um, a rabbit study. Federico Bianco from Parma, Italy has done a lot of work in animal studies using this NIST technique or nebulization technique, using a special e-flow vibrating uh, neo uh, vibrating membrane nebulizer 
using undiluted hero syrup, and uh, they use 200 and 400 milligram per kilo, both showed an improvement in PaO2, decrease in PCO2, and compliance improved, and uh, uh, using um, 200 milligram per kilo dose. There is a phase two clinical trial is underway, uh, sample size 288, 28 to 32 week gestation with RDES is registered in the European uh, Euro DAC. And uh, I guess we need to wait for uh, outcome. What about uh, nebulized with 400 milligram of kerosene but insured 200 milligram using CPAP in one day old new one piglets? So they lavage the lung, created RDS, and they showed that both insured and nebulization with kerosene reduced the need for mechanical ventilation of 72 hours of age, improved lung mechanics, compliance improved, and as well as PF ratio improved gas exchange here, improved gas exchange. So both insured method and nebulization works equally in this animal model. So if nebulization can work, we can totally avoid intubation. Uh, I think it's an interesting concept, but it needs to be tested in babies. So they looked at atomization, um, learned from Sweden, and Bianco was also one of the investigators. Um, NIST, here the NIST is supraglottic airway device using the atomization in a piglet model, term piglets. Uh, here is the epiglottis. This is the pharyngeal cannula that was used to deliver um, surfactant. Uh, and they showed that distribution uh, using the uh, radio labeled surfactant with the atomization versus installation uh, by the endotractic were very similar. So lung deposition, they found 40% of the lung surfactant got deposited in the lung. Typically, when you intubate Q surfactant, about 80% of the surfactant gets deposited. So they were nebulized for a period of about 30 minutes. So again, another major uh, development is a newer synthetic surfactant using peptide analogs for SPB and SPC. We just completed a trial, multicentral trial published in this month in Journal of Pediatrics, and we showed that Kirosur uh, this uh, new synthetic surfactant works as good as Kerosur in terms of FiO2 needs, SF ratio improvement, were very similar in the two groups. What about in, in Rexure? So here in this study uh, from Italy, Vento et al. published, they intubated the babies, placed them on high frequency oscillatory ventilation at the mean airway pressure of eight, 15 hertz, amplitude of 15, oxygen was guided uh, target saturation. So they show that a lung recruitment maneuver just before surfactant administration improved the efficacy of surfactant treatment in extremely preterm neonates compared with standard insure technique without increasing the risk for adverse neonatal outcome. But they called it as a non-invasive respiratory support strategy. I don't think so. Intubating, putting the baby on oscillator, I don't think it's, uh, in my opinion, uh, it's going to be practiced. So this, I guess, on my last slide. So multi-center randomized control trial, we are planning called the LISPAP study. Hopefully we'll start in early 2021 using the LISA catheter. This is the catheter with the markings, both the distally, the round soft tip, 25 to 28 week gestation on nasal non-invasive ventilation support, FIO2 0 0.3 or greater, saturation 88 to 95, sample size 150, two to one, 100 babies to LISA, 50 babies to insure. This trial has been registered with clinicaltrials.gov. So we haven't started recruiting yet. So we talked about the past, present, and future is going to be, you know, four major interventions in preterm babies for RDS management include antenatal corticosteroids, avoiding routine intubation and stabilizing the babies on nasal CPAP or NIPPV, and then early rescue surfactant treatment and caffeine. Thank you very much for your attention and be happy to answer any questions.